Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday, and there's always room for one more. Come right this way. Have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 108th week. Sweeney, clear the floor. Katie, bar that door. Molly, put on one more pot of Irish coffee and then bring out those Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. We've got a full house today, not a chair to spare. Now, I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, and you can reach me on my webpage at www.irishroots.com, and you can find all of my books and the podcasts and the video cast, the whole shoot mats on that blog, I mean, on, on and the blog, on that webpage. And you can check out the written show notes on the blog, which includes uh, more information pertaining to this podcast itself. And uh, that reminds me to tell you, phone 816-256-3360 and leave your comments on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. Among today's topics... The Irish family name of the week is Little or Lytle, uh, First Cat Hospital in Ireland. The book of the month is Irish in Australia, Searching Beggins, Fay, and Highland, New Irish Genealogy DVD launched, Beamish Disappears, Irish Video of the Day, Canada Irish Parade Explained. Hey, that reminds me to say uh, uh, I really owe a vote of thanks to all of our members and uh, uh, anybody, anytime you join up, anytime you sign on and uh, you're a member, it sure makes a difference because you're the only support we've got and it keeps me going on these podcasts. But now let's talk about what the notes are for this week. Hey, number one, I'm still twittering away at uh, twitter.com slash Irish Roots Cafe. A link to that on the blog. Uh, feel free to jump right on in there. Number two, I'm launching my very first ever DVD this week. I might have mentioned it once or twice, but this is the formal launch coming out here Monday. This is today. And it has 11 features on it. And that includes seven of my genealogy videos, uh, one early travel movie we did of one of our, our first uh, uh, groups that went to Ireland back in the 80s with us, and uh, that was sure fun. And we also added uh, one each of the three podcast series, including the Danny Boy broadcast with the slideshow, uh, the Irish Roots Cafe Genealogy and History with the slideshow, and the History of the Irish in America uh, audio show with a slideshow. And uh, that's really quite a bit. I tell you, you give that to somebody as a gift, and they might just end up understanding why you're interested in Irish families and Irish history. They might even get the bug uh, to check out the rest of their Irish family. Number three, I finally, rec I finally finished recording our Irish Song and Recitation Festival shows, and I should have the announcement up today or tomorrow, so... Uh, pick it up on my webpage or subscribe for free through iTunes. Uh, it's been just about a year since the first season ended, and so now we're starting the second. And, uh, hey, you know, you can always call in. We, we do accept special applications uh, through the web. You can call in on Skype, or I can get a hold of you if you've got something you want to uh, submit for the Irish Song and Recitations Festival. And you know what? The big news this year is... I, on, on the first uh, official, the really first official uh, episode, I was forced to start off with a song of my own this season, or should I say singing it. Uh, so I picked one that was in the Irish language, uh, along with its English translation, and then with how it changed into a new song, sort of with new words when it hit America. So you'll be treated to that here in the next week or two, and uh, it's a first-time performance really for me. Uh, and watch out for a CD of Irish songs from the 1800s coming up that I'm putting together with friends here at the cafe. And who knows, we may add a few uh, few new friends and a few new songs before we get there. Now, the uh, Song and Recitation Fest this year is going to feature, oh, it features Michael Collier and Adam Branschwag and uh, uh, Emily Wyatt in song and on the harp, and that's just for starters. And... Uh, you can subscribe, like I said, uh, to this one on either iTunes or right from irishroots.com. 
I've got the links on the blog if you want to click it that way. And uh, the Song and Recitation Festival is the third broadcast series from the Irish Roots Cafe. And we feature music, song, and stories from days past as they come about. And we include uh, song and history of the Irish worldwide. So if you've got a submission from Australia or Canada or uh, uh, the UK or Ireland itself even, wouldn't that be a treat? We already had one of those last year, and that was great. I hope to do that one again. Uh, well, you're invited to participate with your own song, story, or tune, or recitation, so feel free to do so. Well, now it's time for our selected book of the month. Well, this week I picked a book from the web. I just sort of went out browsing uh, what might be interesting. And uh, it's not one of the 60 books I've written and published over the last 30 years. Uh, but it is a, uh, a book on the Irish in Australia by James Francis Hogan. And uh, this website says that Australia has a long association with the Irish. And many Irish people have come to Australia since the first fleet arrived in 1788. Uh, the e-book, The Irish in Australia by James Francis Hogan. Of course, there's also the old uh, hard copy book of that, but this is an e-book, and it's at gutenberg.net.au. Uh, then a bunch of numbers there. I won't bore you with that, but you can uh, uh, click that link on the blog and check it out if that's of interest. And I bet you there's some of you out there that are really interested. I've been talking to more and more folks from... Uh, from down under here the last few weeks. A lot of those folks on Twitter, too. So I know we got a good audience out there. But hey, you know what else we got coming up? The O'Neill clan, their stronghold, their old stronghold up in Northern Ireland is going to be open to the public, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Right now, it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. Well, number one, new member Kimberly H. Etheridge of Arnold, Maryland. Welcome. And you're searching for the Highland family of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Number two, gold member John Patrick Little of Perth, West, Western Australia. Welcome. Uh, you're searching Little, Beggins, and Fay. And you also wrote down there Town Land of Drum Lane slash Cormine Moor and Parish of Lara, County Cavan, and Coyle slash Corcoran, Parish of Drung, County Cavan. Got a lot of County Cavan roots there, don't you? That's a good one. Number three, John Nolan of Ontario, Canada. Your County Dublin genealogy has shipped. Four, Lorraine Davis of Monticello, Indiana. Your County Clare genealogy shipped. Number five, Jacqueline McCarran of Honeybrook, Pennsylvania. Your book of Irish families, great and small, has shipped. Number six, Janice McCarthy of Queensland, Australia. Your families of Cork and County Cork genealogy and family history notes has shipped. Number seven, Mary Burke of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Your County Mayo genealogy and family history notes has shipped. Boy, that's a mouthful. Thank you, all you guys there. I uh, hope I can help you out one way or another sometime, some point in time. And I hope those books help you too, help you right along. You know what time it is now? It's time now to move on to the family name of the day. <laughs> Well, the family name today is Little, pronounced by some people Lytle, I'm sure. And our member, uh, John Patrick Little, spells it L-I-T-T-L-E just as it appears or as it sounds. And there's many related spellings of the name, you know, like it sounds. Sometimes there's a Y instead of an I, and it's pronounced sometimes Lytle. And names like Littleton even can be shortened to Lytle. And uh, you can be spelled with a double D in there instead of a double T. And, of course... B banking on the uh, the the meaning of uh, of words in the Irish language, uh, names like Beg and Begain and Begin uh, can also be related to Little, uh, based on the meaning of that word in Irish. Now it's part of variant spelling groups eleven o seven, 
1108 and 1715. And I bet you all know where that's coming from. That's taken from the master guide to the various spellings of Irish family names. And I've got a link to that on the blog, and I've uh, all wrote out six or seven of those variant spellings just to help. Well, let's take a quick look at the history of the name here. Uh, the Little family, when it's found in Ireland, can be either of Scottish or English heritage, they say. And as you might expect, most of them are found up north in the province of Ulster. And, uh, of course, there are a few scattered about. You might found, find a little just about anywhere. But Ulster is the headquarters, they say, the traditional center for the name. And the birth index finds the family most often in Antrim, Dublin, and Fermanagh. Uh, the name of Little, like I mentioned before, can all be a tr also be a translated name from the Irish, coming from the Irish name of Beg or Begs, etc. And in that case, it would have some Irish roots, but uh, they say that's not that doesn't happen too often. But you got to research it yourself to find out. And this information is taken from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. That's the master book to the uh, Irish Families Project that I wrote. Oh my gosh, a decade, two decades ago. I can't, I hate to even add it up. Uh, but everything I know was just sort of put in there. And uh, I guess now I could write five or six more volumes, but I might be at the end of the road with the publishing there. Uh, there there's a limit to what one person can handle. Hey, let's take a look at the Irish family coats of arms. Here's some of the information that I found when I looked up the name in the Irish book of arms. Uh, let's just take, well, here's one, Littleton or Lytleton, L-Y-T-T-E-L-T-O-N, as it was given in the year 1806. And it's uh, noted that it was in uh, Debrett's work, and it was named after William Henry Lytleton, a baron in County Longford, and married to Mary McCartney. Well, that could, of course, easily be shortened to Lytle. We don't know that that happened, but... Just to keep your imagination alive, and, and if your name doesn't happen to be Little or Lytle, you can just imagine what extended spelling of your name might exist that your name could have been shortened to. Uh, coming up later, what do we've got? You know, uh, I was reading in a, a release today on the web somewhere. It says, it said, did you know that a Catholic still cannot marry into the royal family by law? It's illegal. We'll have more on that later. Well, let's do the last of the uh, family name here. If you go to the free master index search of Irish family names on irishroots.com, we'll find the family name 36 times, and it includes these examples. I'll just pick, pick seven of them at random here. There is a F little in the families of County Dublin, Ireland. There's a little in the Missouri Irish book, and there's a little son in uh, the book The Scottish Max. So little son could be shortened a little, and P oh, could be shortened a little. Oh, I tell you, it could be shortened too little. And P F little is in uh, volume twenty-eight of the Journal of the American Irish Historical Society. Little ton is in the Birth Index of Ireland. Uh, little is also in the sixteen fifty-nine census, and in Milesian families of Ireland. So there's no shortage of records for the name. Well, now we're going to move right on to the websites of the week. Well, we've picked, I think it is, three uh, websites or videos of the week here today. You can go to the blog and click just to get right on them, assuming I've done everything right. And I assume you also will let me know if any of those links don't work so I can just jump right in there and fix them. Well, the number one website uh, is, uh, it was also, it's a video and some, uh, uh, some text there explaining it, and it's about Canada's St. Patrick's Day, and they explain a little bit uh, about what the day is and why, and uh, had a couple of officials from Ireland there help, helping uh, the interview explain the whole thing. So I think it was Declan Kelly, who is the Irish ambassador to Can Canada, and Noel Dempsey, who was uh, Irish transport minister. And they were talking, and they were talking about how some people say 15% of the Canadian population uh, was Irish or has roots in Ireland. And they said that the spirit of Canada has be, been, been infused with that Irish population and its spirit. So that's good to know because that's happened in America too. Number two, the second video of the week is how to make 
Irish coffee, classic Irish coffee, and how the name Irish coffee actually came about. And, uh, you know, a real Irishman tells the story, and uh, uh, he's from uh, Kilkenny in Ireland, and it's David Hoyne. And you can click on the video and, and see him behind the bar explaining the whole story. And he mentions that Irish coffee began as a warming beverage for American tourists stopping in Ireland, but it didn't really take off until years later in San Francisco, uh, where the Americans put that old name game to work and uh, really fired it up. Number three, uh, another web page of the day is our uh, uh, new listing for the D- Irish DVD I talked about earlier. I finally put it up there so you can take a look at the cover and uh, see it. And I'm offering it two ways. One is just uh, the DVD itself in a plain old white sleeve and an adhesive white sleeve. And the second way is in the box with the four-color cover front and back. And uh, uh, actually, it's an amore case. That's just one of the many things I had to learn putting this together, just what an amore case was and, uh, and how much they might cost. And also, if it was handled by Amazon, what the special specifications were, like you had to be able to read the name of the uh, title on the side of the the case, and you had to have a UPC code back there, not a ISBN code like books. So uh, it was a learning experience, and I'm sure you can all appreciate that. Well, we're going along great today. I'm going to meet my timeline, and uh, let's just take the last part, and that's Curious News and Notes. Well, the royal ban on Catholics, uh, that is, it means it's illegal for heirs to the throne in England to marry a Catholic. And some people are talking about reversing that and uh, taking it away because it's a form of discrimination. And the law has been in effect since the 1701 Act of Settlement. You know, the world's changed quite a bit since the Act of Settlement, but the problem is that the Queen is also the head of the established church, the Church of England. And they say it's a very difficult uh, and controversial controversial problem to solve. Boy, talk about church and state. We have a little problem there, don't we? Hmm. But the, the story's on the BelfastTelegraph.co.uk, and I've got the link on the blog. Number two. An Irishman named George Corellis of County Meath is one of the 16 finalists for what is being called the best job in the world. He was picked from 35,000 applicants to be uh, the one person who gets to be the caretaker of Hamilton Island in Australia. Uh, he gets to uh, roam the island at, at, at leisure, and uh, he also has to write a blog while he's there promoting the island. Well, I could do that. I could sit on the beach and just blog forever. And for that six-month job, he gets paid 75,000 euros, which is a very tidy sum to be sitting on the beach uh, on your own private island. Number three, the very first veterinary hospital in Ireland just for cats is set to open after Easter in County Cork. No dogs allowed. It is the dream project of Claire Mead, age 35, who is building the hospital at Barnavara Hill in Glanmere. Well, or Glanmire. And that's out of the examiner.ie. You've got a link on the blog. I would have thought there would have been a, uh, a hospital just for cats maybe earlier than this, but uh, that just shows you how much I don't know. Number four, calling all O'Neills. The O'Neill stronghold that's at Castle Hill in Dungannon, County Tyrone, is going to be open to the public for the first time in 400 years. Now, every O'Neill should know about Dungannon. It was a stronghold, and there's pictures of it, and most of it's still standing, and they're redoing it. And boy, wouldn't that be a grand time for a family reunion? You could get up at one of those turrets up there and call the meeting to order. And uh, the parklands around that uh, castle are included, so you could just you could just be uh, pontificating to the whole crowd out there in the parklands. And uh, my gosh, can't you imagine a couple of thousand O'Neills out there shouting, waving their spears? Well, better not have any spears. I think that should all be taken care of at the airport. Make sure they're unarmed, and we'll have a nice, peaceable celebration. 
Number five, hope you stopped, stocked up on Bema Stout, if that's your drink, because it's been removed from all international sales, or at least is soon to be, uh, once this stock runs out that they've got now. So run down there to that corner store and grab your Beamish and put it in the freezer. Well, put it in the icebox or next to the fridge. Uh, I've got a link to that story on the uh, blog. It's out of the examiner. Uh, number six, uh, hotels in Dublin and Cork have lowered prices, but County Galway or the town of Galway, the hotels there are more expensive than hotels in Paris, London, and Barcelona. That's according to just a recent survey. That's amazing. I guess there's not enough hotels there in Galway town, so they get to raise the price. But then again, you've got some awful good areas to see out there in the West. Uh, but that's out of the examiner too. Got the link on the blog. You can take a look at that. Hey, it's been good. I hope you look me up on Twitter and remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at irishroots.com or send it by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. That's where you send all correspondence and orders for books or, or videos. That address there works fine if you're going to use the mail. And leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360. Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Find me on MySpace at Irish Roots Cafe. And find me on Facebook at Mike O'Loughlin. And on Twitter, and on Twitter as Irish Roots Cafe, I've got a link to that on the blog. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Oh.